Alright, so I was asked a thing. Um, normally I would address this in the vlog stream, but I feel like it's actually just content, and I should make, like, a broader video on, like, everything I discuss, including this, you know, and I plan to, but, um, ultimately, uh, I think now is more important than ever to get into this. So I, I want to really emphasize what I'm talking about tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, I've been banned from Reddit uh, before uh, for spamming, which is not something I was doing. I was using the, serv the services like a bunch of other people were. And, uh, I got singled out for, for spamming, and they shadow banned me and eventually just canned my account. Um, so, that was my first real experience, uh, with, with official censorship. My first experience ever with censorship was literally, <laughs> and I'm not joking, my Tumblr was hacked. Um... I had a, a Tumblr blog, not too, uh, it, well, okay, I shouldn't say that, it's like a third of my life, maybe seven or eight years ago, something like that, and uh, <laughs> I would regularly post on that blog, um, and effectively, one time I was in the middle of a fucking Starbucks, because yes, I used to go to those, I pretty much don't anymore. I'm glad I don't, but I was in the middle of a Starbucks, uh, freaking out because suddenly I was logged out of my account, and when I tried to go back into my account, it didn't work, and when I tried to go to the URL, it didn't work, uh, and what had happened, it turned out, was my entire account had been deleted, somebody had gotten in and fucking fuck deleted my entire blog. I was bordering on like 2,000 followers over there, which back then on Tumblr was fucking huge. <sighs> um, and so I was very upset for a sort of significant period of time. But, you know, I got back up and going, right? Because I'm me. And I named my blog Uninterrupted, which is really fucking funny since I barely speak on it ever anymore. Um, I don't know. Should I get back into that? Tumblr sucks now. It's it's a Christian server uh, full of some of the least Christian people. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I, I strongly doubt that anything will ever compel me to return. But the point is that, like... I got banned unofficially there for before anybody else. Then I got uh, uh, fucking officially banned from Reddit. Then I got officially banned from Discord. Um, then the Facebook page associated with the outlet I write for, Agris Nexus, uh, got suspended. Uh, because the, the admin got suspended, and so did every page he was associated with. Uh, because Facebook, as I had written, or as, as I wrote, like, shortly after that, um, is, is an arm of the U.S. government, and they, they like censoring people. It's the reason the Free Thought Project was banned. It's the reason, uh fucking anti-media was banned it's the reason rachel blevins was banned it's the reason so many people are banned all the fucking time on facebook because they go against the atlantic council's desires um and in that vein uh i also then recently got suspended from twitter uh uh, it seems as though there's very few places that I haven't been censored on. And, uh, that's just fucking years of my life gone in whatever instant 
the people in charge of these things, these applications, or malicious actors who obtain login information. Um, whatever they fucking want, whenever they fucking want, you're gone. <laughs> it sucks. So the question today is, I, uh, I posted my, my Auntie Albertson's action rant. <laughs> Would you sell your soul for $50? That was vlog 25. I ranted about um, G Gavin Newsom and other fucking politicians' uh, COVID lotteries. You can check that out if you want. I don't know why anybody watches these things. Uh, they're highly informal and uh, I don't have a script or anything. So I'm just like off the cuff with it. Um, but I don't know. Maybe that might work. Because even though some people have been unsubscribing, I'm still up. You know, feel free to like and subscribe and most importantly share this. Also comment, even if you disagree. I will be reading uh, comments and responding to them tomorrow. Um, in the evening-ish. Um, but I posted this to Facebook and Twitter. I'm also going to start posting these to all my other social media, but I'm on, like, fucking so many things, and it's kind of... It's, it's one of those things where I don't... I, I know I should, especially since what I'm about to talk about is directly related to that, but I don't. So I'll be getting into that soon. You know, don't, don't, don't worry. I'm not going to be 100% hypocritical today. But the question was from Jose K. Unrelated, but I'd like to know your thoughts on Web 3.0, D-Web, that being Decentralized Web, uh, D-App, that being Decentralized App, ENS, that being uh, a way to buy, essentially, uh, uh, names, <laughs> and uh he, he also asked me about, like, blockchain web. Well, I've been writing about this for a significant period of time. Um, and, and I have some, some stuff here. Uh, but first, let me just briefly go over what he's talking about. Web 3.0 is a sort of play on Web 2.0, which is a highly centralized model of web infrastructure that basically took the internet as it was known, which was a vibrant place of weird, odd bullshit. Uh, you know, <laughs> back when I started on Tumblr, uh, you could customize the fuck out of your themes. Before I was on Tumblr, I was on MySpace. You could customize the fuck out of your themes. You could do that. You could customize the fuck out of your themes because they gave you lots of creative control. They let you uh, augment the code related to your fucking um, actual site uh, before anybody else did that. Uh, unless, of course, you wanted to actually just build a site, which was possible, of course. But they made it easy, and there were a, th a ton of themes that you could download, and backgrounds that you could install from third parties and it was a wild time and everybody had to be super unique and it was weird and clunky and jarring and every fucking single website had autoplay music um <laughs> which i still hate um but to be clear uh, Web 2.0 was basically, fuck all that. Everything's gonna be uniform. Everything's gonna follow similar rules. Uh, we're all gonna be on similar enough pages. Everything's gonna be minimalist and rounded. And, um, if you don't like that, too bad. That's what Web 2.0 is. It's also a massively centralized censorship circle jerk where everything involved in, in these sites is just like, <laughs> there's an official narrative, and if you fucking question that, everybody's going to come down your throat, not only the fucking uh, website itself with its censorship tactics and telling you to take shit down and all this bullshit, but also uh, fucking... <laughs> 
the the general uh, public will will fuck you over. You know, we've gone from a fundamentally like sort of wild uh, internet to this. Isn't this great? Isn't it great to think about like all the uh, <laughs> all the all the fucking freedom you lost? Um, it, it was, it was less about what people made and it was more about, you know, who people were and it got all this fucking isolated siloed identity bullshit. Everybody was blocking everybody. Everybody's reporting everybody. Everybody's a Karen with their phone out in public saying, you're not wearing your mask. You don't look like you've got 15 band-aids on from 18 booster shots. You, 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 you call the cops. Um, like <laughs> web 2.0 is a curse and a disease. Um, <laughs> but web 3.0 which is generally speaking uh, what this person was listing is like the new frontier, you know? Uh, it's, it's the potential um, to, like, increase the freedom of the people or to dramatically decrease. Because there are certain people in the Web 3.0 front we're like, let's decentralize everything. Let's make everything awesome again, right? And then there are other people who are like, hey, let's make everything AI-based and know what you think before you think it so that they can prevent you from saying the thinky things that they don't want you to say think. Um, <laughs> so there are certain unseemly elements in Web 3.0 development, and I'm not going to pretend as though Web 3.0 is awesome all the time. However, um, there are a lot of people who are trying to build the new web, right? And generally speaking, uh, make it return to a less censored uh, framework. Those people are uh, doing things like I regularly promote. Uh, I wrote a follow-up article to the Facebook article. My Facebook article uh, was called Facebook is not a private company. And in it, I went over some of the general things that, uh, that I don't like about Facebook. It's founding, it's funding, it's fucking people. Um, <laughs> I went over the fact that like, uh, a ton of people involved in very high places uh, threw money at it in the same way that they threw money at a bunch of government projects for intelligence purposes, uh, not the least of whom were people like, you know, Peter Thiel, um, Jim Breyer, and Excel Partners, Greylock Partners, which I promise you is not a fucking fake name. It still sounds fake to me. It still sounds bullshit. It sounds like... It sounds like the name of, of, of an evil corporation or, or some sort of malevolent entity in, in like a fiction book somebody's writing. It doesn't sound real. Y you, you hear the name Greylock Partners and you think somebody's LARPing. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I went over all of this and then I went over the fact that there are a bunch of government employees who now work in Facebook um, that the, the, Facebook was partially funded by InQtel, the CIA, uh, that the, the, the whole thing, and there's like a ton in this article and it's all true. So feel free to check it out. I will link it in the description. Um, but this article was part one in part two, I went over how, uh, Facebook is fail book and, uh, you know, here are some alternatives and the general vibe of that article was that, like, there's actual freer alternatives to Facebook that are less likely to censor you, and some of them can't. Um, I, I fucking, I can't stress it enough. 
that people should get on actual censorship resistant platforms by the way there's a centralization fail article on agoras nexus as well it's where i went over the fact that bitch oot has a bunch of centralization problems because they come from fucking uh the uk and maybe if you're in the uk you have to censor yourself because the government there has fucking laws against jokes <laughs> and and much less any sort of subversive content right um so you know that's just one example the other examples are the myriad examples of uh, of social media censorship that i could bring up my ban from twitter uh discord reddit a uh, variety of shit um i could bring up all of that uh and generally speaking, um, you should consider all of these centralized platforms temporary if you say anything of merit. And even if you fucking don't say anything of merit and you just are friends with somebody who does, because they just go through people's lists and say, yeah, fuck all these people. These people follow that guy. Fuck all of these people. Or if you've ever said something positive about somebody that they don't like, it still fucking riles me up that Alex Jones is a hate figure comparable to Hitler. <laughs> okay, I we we all believe you very much. Uh, YouTube, I I believe you. I believe you and all of the corporations that are taking your side and everybody else that's on your side. I one hundred percent believe you. Um, would you like some coffee with this hand job? Uh, anyway, <laughs> let me, let me get to the meat of this. So I went over the fact that Parler and Gab are ass cancer that you drink through a coffee straw. Um, I went over the fact that float is good, but they're also centralized and so is mines and me, we, uh, I went over the fact that Twitch, even though it claims to be like a sensor resistant alternative is still centralized they don't give you your fucking keys. They don't give you access to your to your own personal fucking kingdom. And they can uh, ban you for pretty much fucking anything they want. It's why I pretty much don't use that place anymore. Not the least of which is uh, I didn't get, like, a profit at all. I, I, I threw money at it, and I'm glad I didn't throw much because it's not very good, and most people don't use it, and... When I fucking tried to make some money, uh, I basically didn't. Um, people like Danny Trejo have got money already. They have no need for any sort of, like, uh, help in that regard. So they can promote Twitch. But in general, um, it's, it's not really a decentralized app. It still has central control over anything and everything within it. So I'm not a fan. But then I went over places like PocketNet, which is better than fucking ever. Please get on it. Uh, if Especially if you run a vlog, use my referral link. Um, they, they give you, like, according to, according to their pitch, they're going to give you about uh, $1,000 worth of USD token for a certain amount of views. I forget exactly which it is. And ratings. And I, I, if I remember correctly, it wasn't much because basically their pocket coins are worth that much. Um, I think it's like three bucks per coin right now. Um, so just to be extremely clear here, um, that's the app that I push the most because it kills Twitter. It really fucking, it just, it kills Twitter. You can categorize your content. You can make full blog posts with no character limit. You can make video posts now, and they're about to integrate live streaming. Get on fucking PocketNet. My link is in the description. You know? <laughs> I don't know what people are waiting for. Um, and I went over a now defunct thing called Commune, and a thing that I pretty much don't use because nobody's on there, so me. Um... And then I went over Steam It and the fact that there are a bunch of things that forked off of it. But I also went over the fact that Steam It has some corrupt people associated with sort of an inner circle. And uh, it kind of stopped working so well. I went over the fact that Mastodon, because Steam It's another blockchain thing, right? 
I went over the fact that Mastodon is good, but it, uh, you know, it, it has limitations in the, like, the uh, scope to which you can access things, and they can still, like, ban your instance from interacting with theirs or something. But, like, you know, it's it's still a step in the right direction and basically operates in the same federated way that things like GNU Social, Diaspora do. You know, like, th these these sorts of, like, other, like, alternatives where GNU Social, um, it, it has, like, uh, uh, video file uploads, I think, and I think other file uploads. Diaspora uh, does as well. Um, you can make full-on posts with as much detail as you want. Um, and then there's the decentralized internet thing, which you brought up, uh, D-Web. I think the best example of this is ZeroNet, which is a torrent-based system for full websites. That means that if people want your signal to never die, it never will. It means that you can post your highly detailed conspiracy theory with as much code as you like with as much feature rip rip feature rich websiting as you want right and you can send it out into the world and as long as you have a lo loyal group of people who keep it alive who keep it seeding your website cannot be taken down and it's that simple unlike blockchain things which require that somebody have a very sophisticated node in order to operate this is just one website it's not uh the entire blockchain so uh, this is just one website and you can store a website on your computer so let's say you dug up some dirt on somebody and you wanted to publicize that dirt uh, you could set up a zero net and as long as people kept that seating there's nothing they can do about it, which means that if this is something that people were sufficiently upset about, they could keep that information alive no matter whether the powers that should not be wanted it or not. And that is power. So I, I don't know if this specifically answers uh, the, 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 the questions in, in this regard. I'd like to think it does. Oh, and um, ENS is decentralized naming for websites, wallets, and more. Um, and, and, like, if I understand correctly, ENS specifically is on Ethernet, but um, the the stuff that, that... like So there's ENS, there's Unstoppable Domains. I'm actually an affiliate of Unstoppable Domains, so feel free to use that link in the description, too. But effectively, what ENS and these things do... Uh, is it lets you like accept uh, cryptocurrency uh, if, if I remember correctly uh, like your u dot eth or something and then you can just like get everything sent to that um, and then like it, it's it's always like uh, good in these instances to have a decentralized way to manage your site and I can. And, uh, and in, in general, the way websites work right now, your, your domain is controlled by a centralized controller, and they can shut you down. That's what happened to Gab. Maybe twice? I think it happened once, at least. Um, and it's what happened to a variety of other places. Um, and in general, what this does is it lets you be a permanent uh, domain address, which you own forever which they can't shut down, which means you could point that domain address to your home server or a server that's masked behind several proxies so that you can hide it somewhere so that, like, you can, you can set up your ZeroNet site and uh, have it be the main, the main seed for the torrent and then, just, like, on a Pi or something and then just point your domain to that Pi with some proxies on it and then you've got, like, pirate radio, essentially. It's really fucking cool. Um, and so, like, there's, there's so much you can do now. There's so much you can do. Um, but most people don't do it. Because most people are programmed to believe that when the social media company does the thing, it's okay. Um, specifically, 
uh, I've had a significant problem with right libertarians on this, which is why I came up with my fucking mockery uh, image that I constantly throw at them, uh, where I say, they're a private business, and it looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh! trap card. Uh, using this allows you to absolve a business whose practices are being called into question of any guilt or responsibility for their actions, no matter what effects are on the field. This counter may only be used if a business is criticized, or business is questioned as I wrote it on the thing, and only if the user believes it cannot be countered by anything. Because that's exactly what it is. Oh, I said it's a private business. That means you have to shut up now. You have to accept what I'm saying. You can't have any arguments. And if you do have an argument, you're a communist or something. Or you're a Russian, because I, 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 shit libs do this too. Uh, so, private businesses, first off, most social media companies aren't. Uh, Google, for instance, is heavily bought by the U.S. government. Um, and from its inception has accepted significant funding for various projects. And that funding is one of the key reasons that Google is as powerful as it is. In addition to the fact that the U.S. government has pretty much helped them with regulations every step of the way. Um, <laughs> and at this particular point, uh, all social media is basically affiliated with the state. Um, so at, at this point... There's a significant amount to be said for the decentralized web. And pretty much there always was, but the image is clearer now. And there's there's more than what I listed, right? Um, I listed some, some stuff, but there's also the Fediverse for files, you know? Like PeerTube. There's also the Fediverse for... Well, sorry, there's also the decentralization... A network for files in terms of blockchain in terms of like Filecoin and various other things like I have this entire article on how to share uh, files uh, decentralized um, and, and well encrypted uh, but like a lot a lot of the solutions I recommended were decentralized um, and there's a lot of good that can be derived from all of these the links will be in the description um, and in case YouTube decides, in their infinite wisdom, to suspend me, uh, this is going to be automatically synced with Library, which is a blockchain-based uh, and BitTorrent-like technology-based thing. You can hear my interview with uh, Kaufman, the, the CEO, um, on, on my YouTube, uh, and also, of course, on Library itself. Um, it uses those technologies to offer videos and files and a bunch of other shit. And it, this is going to be synced there automatically. I'm hoping PocketNet has a similar feature in the future. That'd be nice. But in general, um, I, I wanted to put this out because I thought that this deserved a lot more time than I think I would have had um, in, like, part of a stream. Uh, so... I figured this would be a good thing to just sort of harp on for half an hour. And we are approaching that half an hour mark. Just remember, every time you trust your data with these mega corporations, you're basically saying, yeah, I'm okay with it if you censor me. Or, I'm not unokay enough with it that I'm willing to do basic things to improve my lot in life. And there are plenty of basic things that you can do. So I hope that this puts some stuff in your hands uh, in regards to that. And there's a shit ton more information, too, if you decide you want uh, to get involved in that. But anyway, with that being said, uh, this was brought to you by OPSEC Drip. Um, feel free to check out his channel, subscribe, like some videos. It's 60 Second Libertarian News in highly low resolution. Uh, and feel free to also subscribe to mine, like this video, share it, it helps a lot. And be well, smash the state.